So here we go again, <laughs> and um, it's it's good to be with you. It's so such a blessing. I know some of you are so uh, faithful. Um, it's a delight to let the life of Christ flow through these words, through this vessel, and speak blessing into you, into your house, into your family. Um, and I'm so blessed that some of you are in touch and we communicate somehow. We are going this, uh, this month to understand relationships in, in a new way. The Word of God is alive, fresh, new, working inside us. And for the last uh, few days we, we um, uh, focused on the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, um, clarifying that's not fruits, but it's the fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is Christ. It's who He is. And all those aspects or facets are like a diamond facets, faces, and sides that are shining different light and the love and the joy and the peace. And we are looking at Him when that fruit is at the, um, uh, the top uh, the uh, ripe uh, season, that fruit is Him. That love, extreme love, perfect love that casts out fear. That perfect love, it's Christ. It's the Lord. It's Him that does that. So, um, again, we are going into somehow to, to get to that steady, unchanged, established way of walking with the Lord. Too many ups and downs. You know, the sinuses, uh, you know, the, the way we, we deal with things and stronger here, weaker here, with some people stronger, some other people weaker. The Lord wants to grow this fruit. And we went through all the aspects so far. And we'll have a recap. But we want all these aspects to come to a place of never stumble. Of being uh, fruitful in the knowledge of Christ. That's from Second Peter 1. And an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly. Talking abundance. Uh, talking never stumble. Uh, talking election made sure. I mean, these are so powerful expressions that all have to do with the fruit. Him in us. He didn't just send us a message, said, okay, believe it and receive it now you try to live the best you try to do the good things and stay away from the bad things and one day you'll come to heaven that's that's not really how we understand the message of the gospel right he did everything perfect finished work but then he sent the perfect holy spirit in us to bring and manifest, impart that finished work. So, yes, the Lord completed it, but the revelation of it, the impartation of it, it brings our soul in that place of finished work. And He does that by this fruit. That's, you know, the seed is the incorruptible seed, which is Christ. And the fruit that's growing from it, it has all this 
that look like him. It's, it's him. <laughs> so today we are looking at the fruit of the Spirit that is gentleness. The word for gentleness in Greek is praotas and is also translated meekness. Gentleness, meekness. Poor in spirit, humble, merciful over judgmental. Right? You're thinking mercy. Uh, meekness. There is an interesting, I'm um, not sure why it's in parentheses, but interesting uh, verse in Numbers about Moses, Numbers 12, 3. And he says, Now the man Moses was very meek. And listen, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth, above all the men, the meekest. <laughs> Maybe it's in parentheses because Moses wrote the books, right? So I didn't want to say that about himself. Maybe somebody added later um, about his life. But that's the reality. He was the meekest from the whole earth. And you know when he makes this... Um, affirmation this when he says this when the closest people to him his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam I mean totally the right and the left hand right there with him turned against him and started to speak against him like well we are we are God's people. God speaks through us too. I mean, Aaron, come on, you are the high priest. Uh, you know, you, you actually speak better than Moses because he's kind of stammering. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly all that rebellion that came, but they turn against their brother, the leader, absolute anointed by God. And in that moment, it makes this Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth he could have defend himself um, put them in the right place um, and degrade them um, fire them <laughs> he did none of that Actually, he didn't even de defend himself. God decided to defend him. So God called all three of them to the uh, tabernacle of meeting. <laughs> the tent. Ooh, that was very harsh. <laughs> but see, he's no respect of persons. So God is really dealt with Aaron and Miriam. Um, even if Moses was just kind of let it go. So how did Moses become so meek? Through the training. You know, there is a word in, I'm not that much in uh, training the horses, but there is a word that um, in the horse world they are using, which is gentling. The gentling of the horse, of a horse, a wild horse, is getting the horse to obey commands. So relate to you and start obeying the commands, the human commands. Okay. So Moses got to that place of gentleness. <laughs> he got gentled. <laughs> And that means recognizing the authority that's over you. See, that's why he could handle that um, usurper and that attitude of rebellion of Miriam and Aaron. 
because that's what they did. It's like, hey, who are you? I don't obey. But him being a man under authority, he was gentle. He knew that the one that's authority over him will respond to them, will deal with them. That's meekness. See, it's not becoming a robot. So shall I lift up my right, right hand, left hand? It's, is this? No. It's a relationship of trust. Hallelujah. A relationship of trust. It's coming to gentleness, meekness. Look how many things are said about uh, meekness in the New Testament. Blessed are the meek, um, Matthew 5, 5, for they shall inherit the earth. Wow, that, those are not like a wishy-washy, pushover type of people. They inherit the earth. <laughs> Meekness doesn't make you a pushover. <laughs> no, you are actually steadier and stronger than you ever been because that authority that you recognize is the greatest of all <laughs> under God. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle, meekness, and lowly in heart and you'll find rest for your soul. What a secret, what a special secret that you find in gentleness, in meekness. Find rest for your soul. Revolutionary souls are not that restful. <laughs> Galatians 6.1 Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Consider yourself lest you also be tempted. What he's saying here is the one that has the fruit of meekness, the fruit of gentleness, that knows and recognizes, recognizes the authority over the person, over the soul. It's easy to deal with gentleness with others. Right? If you are with the fruit of gentleness, you are gentle. Second Timothy 2.25 In humility, and the word there is meekness, in meekness correcting those who are in opposition. He talks about people in trouble, difficult people. Yeah. It's not patience. I mean, patience helps waiting for them to change. <laughs> yeah, patience works if they are finally changing. <laughs> but in dealing with these people, it's actually the meekness, the fruit of meekness. That's him inside you. That is um, helping correct the ones in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. In meekness, do the correction. In Titus 3.2, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all meekness to all men. See, it's, it's important to know because we're talking, we're kings, we're priests, we are sons of the living God, we, we are sitting on the throne and we talk about things, but see the way Jesus showed us how he is was not just for the years that he was on the earth 
Because what he's building in us, the soul of the Son, Christ in us, he has the lamb and he has the lion. He has the lamb and he has the lion. Right? In heaven, they were looking for the lion and here's the lamb. And they were looking for the lamb and here is the lion of Judah. It's him. It's him. So both of this are actually one soul of the sun and gentleness. It's one of the most precious of the diamond faces. Rejoice.